Tom the Lobster has been living here with me for 187 days now. But even a half a year later, the rubber band marks on his claws are still visible. I cleaned the coral dust off Leon's back in the last video last month, and it's back again, just one month later. So I'll clean it off again later in this video. Look at Leon's amazing armor and joints. I've noticed Leon is on a schedule, a lot like our cats and our dogs are. Do you notice your cats or your dogs always seem to know when feeding time is or what a certain time of day is, though they don't carry a watch or have a smartphone? Abby the cat taps me on the face every morning at 5 a.m. Leon tends to come out around 8 o'clock every night for a bathroom break and run around, and it's pretty consistent. He tends to come out and scour for food in the morning around 9 a.m. and later around 10 at night. Most of the time at night while I'm still up and the lights are on and music's playing or the TV's on, he'll come to the edge of his cave and just sit there watching me. This might be the same as Abby the cat tapping me on the face at 5 a.m. When I notice him there, I'll go into the kitchen and get him something to eat. I'll drop it in and he'll come over and get it. <laughs> oh, here, Leon, let me get you a napkin. <laughs> or maybe a bib with a lobster on it. Okay, maybe not. He also gets wild from time to time for no particular reason, just like the cats do. Cats do weird, unpredictable things sometimes. One time, Abby barfed on my internet wireless hotspot and shorted it out. <laughs> that was pretty weird, random precision. Bobby just finished starring in a new low-budget karate movie. It's playing at mostly small southern drive-ins. <laughs> Baxter and Abby aren't impressed at all. Either that or they're jealous of Bobby's stardom. After re-watching the last video, that antique lobster salt and pepper shaker really started growing on me, so I decided to go back and try and find it. Hopefully it'll still be there. And it was. 
I don't know why I like this weird thing, but I just do. A couple of cool packages came in the mail recently. Miss Wolf and her third grade class from Watkinsville, Georgia sent Leon these awesome paintings and drawings. And each one has a note from the student to Leon on the back. Another package came in from Established Titles. They have given Leon the Lobster a one square foot plot of land in Scotland, essentially making Leon a lord. Or if Leon's a female, he's now a lady. What a cool gift. I looked up the coordinates to see just where Lord Leon's plot of land is and how far it is from the ocean. Here it is. It's pretty close to the North Sea and across from Norway and Denmark. It's basically a fun novelty gift, a great gift to give a friend, partner, co-worker, or family member. And established titles does some wonderful things too. They plant a tree with every order and are committed to preserving the pristine woodlands of Scotland. And because established titles are a fan of Leon and ocean conservation, they have volunteered to make a donation to have a thousand pounds of plastic removed from our oceans. So many sea turtles, birds, whales, and other sea creatures suffer from the masses of plastic floating in our oceans. Go to EstablishedTitles.com forward slash Leon and check it out and see if you'd like to become a lord or a lady, or if you'd like to give it to someone as a fun and unique gift. Just mention the code Leon for an extra 10% off. Leon says, get off me land and stay off. Another thing I've been curious about lately is how smart is Leon? I don't expect him to solve complex equations or get a job teaching at a university or anything, but I am curious about how he thinks and how he problem solves. So I checked out a few thrift stores to find some challenging or unusual objects for him to interact with, hopefully. What do you think the situation is here? A bunch of wine and champagne glasses, all with the same initial on them, all taken to the thrift store. Hmm. I'm careful with what I put into the aquarium. I'm only going to use inert objects, objects that won't leach any chemicals or toxins or anything into the aquarium, like heavy metals or anything that has any sort of residue on it. I try and only use either plastic, glass, or ceramic. Definitely nothing metal. Have you ever bitten down onto a piece of aluminum foil? I wouldn't want Leon clamping down on something metal and having that same type of effect. Also, I stayed out of Leon's sight for these experiments. I wanted to see what his interactions with these objects was without me around. I started off with a mirror, just to see what he does when he sees his own reflection. I washed the mirror with reverse osmosis water before putting it in. Will Leon notice how handsome he is? Will he see himself as an enemy he needs to fight? Let's see.
Here he comes to check the mirror and see how his hair looks. He takes a glance and decides to back away. What do you think? Either he's having a bad hair day or he knows he's about to get into a bar fight. Seriously, he seems a little concerned with what he saw. So I put the mirror back in the next day to see if the outcome was the same. Leon walks all the way up to the mirror this time to get a close look at this stranger. I have no idea what he was thinking, but he heads back to his cave. I think we've all been there before. Next, I try a different object. I put two mussels in a small glass, one in the shell and one out. The two killifish that are still in the tank immediately come over and try and rob it. Next, Leon comes over to check it out. Gives the glass a tap with his big claw, decides something's fishy about the situation, and backs away. The next morning, though, the glass had been tipped over and rolled all the way to the upper corner of the aquarium, and the mussel in the shell had been eaten. The muscle out of the shell was still trapped in the glass against the aquarium wall. So I did the same experiment the next day, with a piece of shrimp in the glass this time. The two killifish are immediately interested in this dinner. Later, Leon comes out to check out the tasty shrimp in this strange object. He taps the glass a couple of times and feels it with his antennae, then decides something's not right about it, so he backs away. Then comes right back to it. taps it a few more times, feels the shape and texture of the glass with his very sensitive antenna, and backs away again. The glass is very solid and heavy, so there's something about it that he didn't like or didn't trust. He comes out four more times during the night to inspect the strange object. 
He tries to slip his pincher claw under it, but eventually decides it's either too risky or too much work. Next, I try a stemless wine glass. The top is open so Leon can smell the food inside. Of course, the two killifish break into it immediately. Leon doesn't want any part of that feeding frenzy. He comes out to check the strange object with food in it a few more times. Obviously one of these killifish is a male and he's interested in dinner and a date. Don't look Leon, cover your eyes. So I went ahead and evicted the remaining two killifish. Caught them with the net and got them out of there. They weren't harassing Leon, but they were definitely harassing his food. And I would prefer Leon to be on his own eating schedule, rather than being on their eating schedule. Leon likes to eat some, then take the leftovers and put them somewhere, and then come back later and eat them when he's hungry again. The killifish obviously would just find the food and devour it. It's like when you put some leftover spaghetti in the fridge and you can't wait to eat it the next day. But when you open the fridge the next evening, somebody has stolen it and eaten it. I tried a couple of other objects over the next few days. I dimmed the light some with this one to see if his interaction with this object was any different. He comes over and feels it with his long antenna, and apparently his antenna are telling him he shouldn't engage with this subject. Sometimes I wish I had that ability. How about you? So the next day I loaded the cup with food again, and this time I turned the lights out to near complete darkness and used an infrared camera to see what he does with it in the dark. He comes out several times to check it out. He never tips it over to get the food out though. One time he came out and just sat and stared at it for over five minutes straight. These are only my observations, not highly scientific, but I'm thinking that Leon is basically very street smart. He does not take chances, even after being here for nearly six months. He's very cautious and doesn't trust objects that he's not familiar with or doesn't understand. Whenever I get the spray bottle out to miss my plants, Baxter totally hits the road. So, what do you think? Likely his previous owner used to squirt him with a spray bottle whenever he was doing something she didn't want him to do. I think Leon has probably learned like this too along his journey, not to trust objects he's not familiar with. Maybe he remembers getting tricked and caught in a lobster trap. Maybe he remembers the strange steel tool that put rubber bands on his claws. Another thought is he's just well fed these days and is not hungry enough to take risks on things that he doesn't trust. Lobster fishermen often use really smelly, enticing bait like dried salted herring to lure lobsters into their traps. 
Often in feral rescue cats and dogs and other animals, when they are starving, they take extreme chances and risks just to eat. Once their hunger is overcome, then they can go back to being who they really are with their instincts and other safety mechanisms working again for their safety and well-being. I think it's hard for me to put myself in Leon's position. First off, I've never had my hands bound for weeks. I've never been caught in a trap, at least not physically, and I've never been put in a grocery store for sale. But again, I don't know what Leon's comprehension of all this is in the first place. So it may all be irrelevant, or it may actually be very relevant to the way he's responding to these strange objects. Who knows? My answer to the question, how smart is Leon the Lobster, is, well, he's very street smart and instinctive. He seems to be a survivor. As always, I welcome your thoughts and comments. Time to clean his back off again. Here he looks like a rowdy kid getting spanked in a circle at Walmart. I'll have a new update on Leon very soon. I'm trying to keep the sponsorships to a minimum. I've got three cats to feed though, many koi to feed, <laughs> Venus flytraps, Leon to feed, inflation, and summer's coming too, so I'm watching Leon's water temperature. I'll likely have to integrate a water chiller into the system over the summer. So an occasional cool sponsor is a great thing. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and feel free to share it with friends you think might enjoy following Leon's journey. We'll see you soon.